Yeah, um, it was a really good talk. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's good. It's cool, interesting. It's cool stuff. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you. Uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah. Welcome back to Welcome the back. FX3D channel. <laughs> <laughs> to FX Street. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you like what we're doing, uh, head on over to YouTube, hit the subscribe button. You can follow Kash and I on Twitter, uh, Kash at Malnyeko, and myself at Just Analysis One. Taking a look here at Ethereum. So Ethereum's had a big old. Well, first off, I'll just say I'll just say this because we're gonna look at Bitcoin after this. But um, Ethereum has it's currently at its fifty percent retracement at twenty nine hundred, which is Pretty much, I mean, last week's low was um, like, what is that? Like uh, $70 above where it is right now. <laughs> so uh, from last week's low to where we are today, not much of a change. Uh, despite the candlestick that you see here, really not much has changed price action-wise. It's The value area has not shifted much at all. So it's hit this 50% for retracement. It could go lower. Um, Ethereum could come down to test the weekly, the top of the weekly cloud, a single span A, and the 618 Fib retracement at 2500, and even you know even lower to test single span B at 2350. Uh, the last time Ethereum has tested single span B <laughs> was back in May of 2020 when it was at 180 dollars. That's the last time it tested Senko Span B and, and the top of the cloud, actually. So, yeah, we're, we're that, that, that's been a while since that happened. Uh, and the composite index on the weekly chart is, if it's not at an all-time low, it's pretty dang close, pretty dang close to an all-time low. And the, the uh, RSI, which is still in the bull market, is... It, pretty straight trajectory right to the last oversold condition in a bull market at 40. So Ethereum, while it looks ugly up here from a candlestick perspective, price action wise and oscillator wise, it's it's in a perfect I just said this last week too, that things there's this huge massive buildup of a shakeout and a and a bear trap in development. And we're kind of seeing that come into fruition here because if you just go back to looking at Japanese candlesticks and if you remember the basic Japanese candlestick patterns one of them is the three rivers pattern and that's three troughs we call that a head and shoulders pattern in the west using American bar charts then then we took those patterns and 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 and, and put them on uh, Japanese candlesticks but Japanese candlesticks are a little different than American bar charts because this, let me see your trend era. This is head and shoulders pattern. Okay. It is also in Japanese analysis, it is a three rivers pattern. Three troughs. Doesn't matter the angle, doesn't matter the slope. There are three troughs. That is a reversal setup. In, in the West, Western analysis, we look for these symmetrical <laughs> patterns here. Um, you know, to, to, to develop where this is also a three rivers pattern. It's like a guy scrunching his shoulders pattern. Um, but it, anyways, yeah, this, this is a beautiful reversal zone. I, I love how it is positioned. I love how it is setting up. I love how it is um, sucking in a lot of new shorts down here. And a lot of weak hands are abandoning. This is this is a prime altcoin reversal moment, and it's going to be pretty dang epic. Uh, so yeah, downside risk limited. It's extreme there to twenty three fifty. Um, upside momentum is going to more than likely carry it up to test four K again. So that's what I see for Ethereum. I'll pass it off to you, Ash. Thank you, John. So from a daily perspective, uh, Ethereum is back at 2,700 level, uh, where the price kind of, it was a mid midpoint here between the, this run up from July to its all time high. Uh, that said, I 
I'm still looking at these two levels here at uh, 34, 3470 and 3640 levels is uh, where I see the upside uh, for Ethereum to be capped. Uh, but judging by this uh, 50 day and the 200 day moving average, uh, they're going to at least uh, retest or maybe even cross over here, uh, where is a death cross somewhere around 31st Jan or whatever. But I do feel like the upside is capped here, uh, if I'm being optimistic. But if you look at Ethereum from a weekly time frame, uh, there is potential for a bearish breaker to form here. Uh, and this will be validated if we get a weekly candlestick close below 2,650. Uh, in which case, if we fail to recover a retest again of this breaker's uh, lower limit here could uh, be the key to pushing Ethereum all the way down to Okay, 1,730, which was the lowest point here on 19 July. And as you can see, uh, the triple tap setup here, quite a bit of liquidity resting here. So it would be a good, uh, would be a perfect setup for Ethereum to collect the liquidity resting down here. So again, uh, this is from an, uh, a high time from perspective. And this is the scenario that I've described right now is keeping in mind the the better scenario for Bitcoin that I've been talking about for quite some time, which is if Bitcoin uh, dips all the way down to 30,000 or uh, sweeps the 30,000 level and uh, collects liquid resting around the 28,000 level. Uh, this is kind of similar to what's happening with Bitcoin right now, uh, although Ethereum is a little lagging. Uh, Bitcoin's weekly candlestick has already closed below a bearish breaker that was formed. Uh, but again, uh, to summarize uh, Ethereum's analysis, I feel the upside is capped at 3,640. Uh, any move beyond this, uh, I feel, is unlikely. But if we get a weekly candlestick close below the breaker's level limit at 2,650, there's a good chance we will retest this weekly support level here at 2,324. And a breach of that would uh, definitely push it to this uh, 1,730 weekly support level and the liquidity resting below it. Uh, that's my take on Ethereum. Well, thank you, Akash, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.